there. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Kufar Akbar, welcome to another edition to the Crossing the Crescent Discussion Group. This is a live stream show that is brought to you every Sunday afternoon at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time until about six o'clock. I just, I just, I don't know. My brain's not clicking here. Um, I, I forgot a lot. I said this is we're supposed to be a, a show rightly de or dedicated to rightly dividing the truth between Christianity and Islam. That's why, I, that's why I got it mixed up there. I mean, I, wait a second. I forgot to say something. Uh, and we are coming to you live from Dar al Harb Kafiristan, deep within the cavernous cave or the Kafir cave. God, I, I, you know what I need to do? I need to write this down. That way I, I don't miss it. When I was doing the radio thing on Block Talk Radio, I didn't miss a step. Boom, 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 because I just read it right off the script every day. But when we try to memorize it, you don't do so good. But welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, we are so glad to see you. Let me jump over to the chat. There's a bunch of chat that I don't see in there. Thank you, everybody, over in chat uh, coming today. Oh, um, let okay. Let me say this in the chat um with the mods in chat um i received a complaint i know you're shocked i received a <laughs> complaint that we were not fairly treating fairly treating the muslims that come to the show in chat <laughs> uh, i'm just okay i'm just i'm just saying so uh because they were being disrespectful and all this that and the other thing um just we must give them our their, their due jizya. We must submit to them. We must give up our seat. We must cross the other side of the road. You kafirs, don't you understand? They, they, they yeah. must run. They, they didn't last it too long on the chat. They just run. <laughs> yeah. um, well, well, here's here's what I would say. Here's here's what I would say. I would say that if somebody is if some if somebody is purposely hurling insults let me just say this if you're purposely hurling insults at somebody try to keep it at no, we, we 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 can do a lot better than just insulting the individual now that if we are going to talk about islam and when you're talking about islam let me make sure i i, I say this correctly so everybody understands that you're that the kafir's not 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 selling you out or throwing you under the bus or anything because I completely agree. If we're going, if we're going to talk about Islam, we're going to go with why we are not Muslims, and that includes, especially me. I'm not a Muslim because of Muhammad. Number one, <laughs> there is nobody in the history of man that has such a favorable rating that lived lived such a repugnant life. When you I think can't about all the, how the word favorable even fits with him. <laughs> well, I mean, if you if you have a billion people in the world after they say his name, may peace. They they also say may peace and blessings be upon him. So I think he has a you know has a favorable rating. I think we can say that. But knowing what we do about what did that come from? I did. Oh, Brad, thank you, Brad. I appreciate it. Yeah, like share, subscribe to the chair. I'm the, my worst agent. Okay, um, so. If we're going to be talking about Islam, that's that, that's free game. I'm, that's I, I, that is free game because the man, as far as I was concerned, is you know he was a murderer, encouraged people to murder. He was a rapist. He enslaved people. He did all these things. You know, we can sit here and we can go down the laundry list of things that Muhammad did. I mean, he stole his, his child, his his adopted son's wife, and stopped people from adopting by doing that. Yeah, I, yeah. We, like, like I said, we can go through a, a a whole laundry list of things that that this man did. I I am not going to pretend that I have any respect for him. I could because I don't, and I I, I want to make sure that Muslims that come to the show know that I'm I'm. That's my honest opinion. That is my honest point of view. I will do my best not to be purposely offensive, but when we do talk about this man. It's going to be offensive because I know how you regard him. And if that's the case, well, then, you know, maybe you should not engage because that that is my personal opinion. But I have my reasons for it. It isn't just like, oh, I hate my, I hate I hate Muhammad. You know, it's not like that. I, I think that the man, what he taught is leading billions of people straight to hell. And it is my hope that those souls, by exposing what he said, what he did, are rescued from that 
from that eternity of damnation. Okay, um, what I want to do here first is I want to make a couple little admin notes. Um, our friend Jay over at uh, Jay Apologetics got his YouTube channel deleted. Um, I'm not sure if you guys heard about this. Evidently, he got reported by a bunch of trolls for copyright violations and had his channel taken down. So if you go over to, um, it's Jay and Daughter of, Daughter of Christ, um, YouTube, you'll see his new channel. Uh, he's trying to get his uh, subscribership back up. Um, he'll be posting videos. Uh, I think he's going to be uploading videos that they had previously uh, made. And uh, then they're going to continue to do live streaming and all those things. So if you can get over there and give him a, a you know, uh, subscribe to his channel and give him a like. Um, anything to get that that channel, that new channel back into the algorithm because he is indeed the gold standard when it comes to polemics. Him and uh, Daughter of Christ both are absolutely spectacular. And, I just posted yeah. I just posted the link in the chat. So yeah. and Don't subscribe. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Uh, all right. Next point. Uh, next week. Next week, we are having another debate. And we're going to be debating Nadir Ahmed. Uh, Nadir's been on the show a couple of times. It's been quite a while since he's been on the show, but um, uh, he's debated, you know, he's debated everybody. He's debated. He debated Michael Brown. Um, if you all remember how that went, uh, he's debated. That David. was, wait, he's, we got to tell the background story on that. So, the week before, or maybe it was the day before he debated Michael Brown, wasn't he on our show? It was either a week or a day before, and he was with Bob the Builder, and he gave the same argument that he gave on Michael Brown's show, and Bob the Builder just tore him apart. It was just a laughing stock, and I, then he goes on he goes on Michael Brown's show and gives the same argument, and Michael Brown actually said, "Is this a joke? Are you, are you are you setting me up? I mean, are you, are you seriously going to make Islam look bad? Well, actually, <laughs> he it was a break. actually yeah. well, what I, re, I remember specifically when he was talking to uh, Dr. Michael Brown, who is a has a terminal degree, degree in Hebrew Hebrew linguistics. Oh, by the way, um, he 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 did misrepresent himself. He was um, if I if I I can't remember exactly how he or or trade it, but it was a misrepresentation. And uh, Michael Brown was like, look, if you wanted, you know, if you wanted to have this discussion, something else, or have a formal debate, let's do it. But this is not this. Anyway, it was anyway, we all know who I think Nadir um, is famous, infamous. I don't know how, how you pronounce it, but he's going to be on the show next week. And we are going to have a moderated debate um, on the crucifixion. Of Christ, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that goes, or how he how he uh, how he does that. And then, lastly, let's do this here. Okay, today is uh, about Quran's historical errors, and let me just say this: I did not. These are not. You know, uh, there's there's all kinds of different laundry lists out there that you can go through as far as you know the historical errors in the Quran. Here's a list. Boom, 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 boom. And you can get all kinds of short, you know, blurbs about them. Today, I just want to just have a discussion about them um, and see what you all think about them. Um, what, what, you know, what are your thoughts are? And I only have 10, I think maybe 11. I don't have, I don't have a lot. But if you go through the historic, there are all kinds of historical errors in the, in the Quran. I mean, this is, I don't want to say it's low hanging fruit, but it's low hanging fruit. Because because the thing is with with the Quran, why on earth should you trust a book that seven hundred like says something like the Exodus is say sixteen hundred BC, and there's no way or sixteen hundred or like the time of that says say Thutmose the third, and essentially when we're dealing with like his um, history, you want something that's closer to the source. So why on earth you don't trust anything written in something like seven hundred AD? That's that's commenting on the life of say Jesus or any any like why else should you take it seriously on any um, historical subject at all? Because because it's not it's not an early source. It's not classed as an early source at all. 
and it doesn't have any leniency at all in like 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 the scholarly like like, like the scholarly world. I mean, if we're dealing with someone like Noah, I mean, if we're dealing with, with like four thousand BC, that, that Genesis is written in the early Bronze Age. There's there's a lot more time difference between say something early than something later. So it's essentially you can't deal with something that that early. Like 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 why not, why not should you believe the Quran say say it's seven hundred AD when you have a lot more earlier sources in the actual scriptures and we have the archaeology to back it up. Well, Dominic, I would just refer you over to the private chat and yeah. <laughs> And just take a look and see what I wrote there. Um, and let's just kind of keep that to ourselves. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go ahead and jump in on this one. Where's my button? There we are. All right. Number one, Ezra. We all know Ezra. Sure we do. Ezra is... Uh, is famous for returning to Jerusalem and uh, rebuilding the walls there, rebuilding the the gates, rebuilding the temple, rebuilding, uh, reinstituting the, the the worship system there in Israel. But the Quran says that Ezra, or the, that the Jews said that Ezra was the son of God. Now, this is a problem. Because if you look at this verse, look what it says here. The Jews call Ezra a son of Allah. And Christians well, they got call his name wrong first. Let's let's be honest here. They can't even say Ezra. That's Uzair. Who's Uzair? I have no idea who Uzair it's is. It's the same thing with Isa. I mean, who, who yeah. in the heck is this Isa character? But yeah, I, I agree. I agree. But you know, they say, well, it's an Islamic translation. No, it's not. That's but let's bull just, crap. We've been away. Let's, let's <laughs> just... Let's just uh, um uh, uh, okay um what was i saying here i it's just crazy, i just read, i just read something in chat and i i, I got kind of, i got kind of distracted sorry um but what they're doing here is they're they're saying that jesus christ the way that the christians worship jesus christ or refer to jesus christ as the son of god the jews refer to ezra as the son of god so the question becomes which group of Jews? This because we all know that this is a false accusation. Ezra was was a priest. He was a scribe. Um, he pe the people loved him, but they did not refer to him as the Son of God. Period. The Jews never claimed that he was the Son of God. Now the question is: Is that well? You know, where does this come from? And of course, you know, you're before you make a claim like that, saying that that uh, you know this the, the, the Quran is wrong. You want to go in and do a little research on your own and look this up. So I did go look this up. I have the article here. Uh, what did I do with it? I have it here. I have it here somewhere. I think this is it. This may be it. Yeah, this was by. Oh, I don't. I didn't write it down. I didn't put it on here. I think it was um, Jonathan Brown. Um, he was <laughs> one that. Uh, anyway, he refers to a book, the fourth book of Ezra. The, now, did you know that? Okay, in the Bible, you only have one book of Ezra, right? Right. Right. Okay. So this is uh, what we would call um, an extra biblical book. Um, I can't remember the proper name for these types of books. But he, he says it's it's on, kind of on the lines apocryphal? of the book. It's not apocryphal. Um, I, I know what I know what you what you mean by that, but it was I can't remember. But anyway, it's second Edras, second Edras, and um, what he's basic it, 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 what he's basically saying is is that in this extra book, this is where they say that. But even here, it does not say that. They, they they call him the son of God. Um, so, you know, even with that, the, the Quran is wrong. Now, I remember we had a, an, an imam. Apocalyptic book, it says. Is that what, yeah. it's, is that what it's known yeah. as? An apocalyptic. apocalyptic. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Thanks. I yeah. Um, we had a, uh, uh, a, an imam on here from Houston, oh, quite a while ago, uh, since he picked up a, a band from Confiristan. Um, who who made this claim on the show and said, look, uh, you know, we 
that's not an error. There were there was a Jewish group that did worship Jesus as as or not Jesus. I'm sorry, Ezra as the Son of God. So you you do a pause and you say, okay, you're gonna have to cite that one for me, baby. You know because it it, it it's not there. And he says, and I, and I told him, I said, look, I'll go looking for it, knowing that it's not. You know, you can't find any group out there this this is the, this is the same thing as saying that the injil was given to jesus and we're referring to the injil it's true islamophobia at its finest it's <laughs> true. exactly what it is and i appreciate that i didn't know he was in the audience here you let him in did you let him in right anyway <laughs> this is this again this is something that you just cannot make up and say well look we haven't we haven't found it yet well, you know, we don't have any Jews writing about this. And if you talk, to, I mean, Jews are pretty, they're, they're, they're pretty concise in, in, in their writings. And, and as far as knowing what is available and what is not available and differentiating between what is canonical, what is not canonical, what is, you know, not akin to, you know, Midrash, Mishnah, you know, they distinct, they're able to distinguish between that. And here you don't have any mention of Ezra being called the son of God. And even if there were, and let's just grant this, let's, let's just pretend here. CP says something. I go, I go with you or I go along with you or I go. So somebody said that CP says, that, right? like, okay, I go with you on this. All right. I'm going to go with you on this one. And let's say that there was a sect out there similar to the Calrindians with the worshiping Mary as part of the Trinity or whatever. You know, what What if, why would you refer to such a small sect as rep, being representative of the entirety of the people? For example, and this is compare and contrast here. Look at what it says. It says the Christians call Christ the son of Allah. Why would you say, because all Christians call Jesus. I mean, is there is there a... Is there a Christian group out there that does that does not refer, excuse me, refer to Jesus as the Son of God? Do you, does anybody know of one? Non-existent. If, yeah, in, in the chat, maybe. I, it, it, again, even if there were, even if there were a small group, what, what, why would you use a small group as being representative of the whole? That, that that makes zero sense, especially if this were if this book is supposed to be clear and ex explaining everything. It doesn't because this this would be an allusion to something that um, only a small sect would did, even if they do name somebody and they and they don't. And you can't find it out there. So that is the first historical error of the Quran. Let's go to the second one, shall we? Does anybody have anything want to add to that? Uh, maybe I left out anything they want to put on there. Uh, da, 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 da. Hey, um, Rad, can you do me a favor and go check and see if we are live? Are we live on Rumble? We should be, but I'll check. Okay, because I, I I see the icon up here. I just I didn't know if I set it up right or did you set that up? Oh, it, 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 as long as there's nothing there with like a, an eye that looks like it's uh, it says it's not working, it's working. Okay. I had well, that here's the funny day. thing. I thought I was wondering who set that up because I forgot, and then I went this morning and it was set up, but you didn't add it in Streamyard. I added see. I don't know how to do that. I don't. Have, oh, did you? Well, uh, uh, yeah, it's real simple. Once you set it up in Rumble, then right. you just go when you're set up. You click on the icon for. Um, Rumble, the green icon, yeah. and then it gives you a drop down, and then you just select the stream. That's not so. And which stream do I select? The one that you just oh, created. The, the the Rumble you select when you I'm select up your okay. stream here. You, you select nice. Rumble, but you have to go back and get the stream key. <sighs> okay. You think that Streamyard would fix something like that? For Pete's sake, get it right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's go to the next one. The next one is, oh, Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. Yes, my favorite little fairy tale. When you look at uh, the Quran, uh, it talks, I mean, this, this story includes um, talking birds, birds that drop rocks on, I mean, it's your first, you know, 
F, you know, strike group of F-35s dropping rocks on their enemies. Uh, you have uh, talking ants even in that. You have a hoopty bird that is like a courier. Um, and then it has gin, genies, and uses black magic. Now, the, th the thing about this is that, okay, you can, you can make an argument to some other stories in the Bible where you have demons, you have demon possession. I think we could all agree with that. Um, and people using incantation, using, you know, witchcraft, things like that. Okay. But a, a talking, you know, cause we have, we have a talking donkey. Uh, does anybody remember what story that comes from? Balaam? Hey, the, Balaam's donkey. Balaam? Balaam? Balaam's donkey. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What book is that found in? Does anybody know? I didn't know. Numbers. It's numbers. Okay. Because I remember, I said, okay, we, we got a talking donkey. Um, the book of Revelation, we have seven-headed monsters. You know, we, the Bible does have, have these types of things in them. But here you have the Quran trying to copy off of the Bible, the biblical story. And this is this is where it get, where Muhammad gets it all wrong. You know, the man couldn't read. I mean, that's, that's just the bottom line. And so when you can't read, you can't really understand what you're trying to explain. And you know what? Let me see if I could conduct a poll. Let me see if I could conduct a poll here in chat. Because there, there's been a lot made, uh, uh, you know, big to do about, you know, Muhammad couldn't read. Muhammad was illiterate. How many people think Muhammad, let me, let me make sure I write this. Okay, if you think Muhammad could read, write yes in the chat. If you think that Muhammad was indeed illiterate, right now. Yes. Thank you, Connie. I see that. That's, yep. Thank you, Dominic. Putting that in there. And she asked Balaam. There you go. All right. Yes or no? No. No. Muhammad could not read. Well, when you get to it, go ahead. And I, I have a problem with that because he supposedly was a businessman. So he had to have known unless he had somebody who Explaining. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's what. That's why I. That's why I think he was. He could read. Um, and you, in order to be, you know, in order to look at, you know, bills of lading, you know, inventory, things of this nature, and plus I, I don't the numbers. He, but I don't think he could. I don't think he was very good in math. I think that's one of the reasons why he wasn't a. I don't think he was a good salesman. He couldn't even keep details. So I mean, Islamophobia. If he could read. Finest, he couldn't put. It's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah, I you know I'm sorry. because no, the, me, just, there's uh, not the the numbers in from my understanding the numbers in Arabic are not re, are not represented numbers they're 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 like letters am I I might be wrong on that well, I don't it would know be that. the same it would be the same thing for Hebrew but he can't add he can't subtract he can't multiply he can't divide I mean we're lucky if I mean they're basic math that he can't do it's scary. Fractions he's totally lost on, which is stuff he would have to know in order to do the job he was supposed to have if he existed. I mean, I, I, I'm at the point where I don't believe he existed. I think it was created, Islam was created afterwards. But, um, well, yeah. I think, I think the world is slowly getting there. That, that, that case is becoming stronger and stronger, uh, as we go on. Uh, my username over at uh, Rumble Nico is Eric Thekifer. Look for Eric Thekifer. What? Because 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 there is a there is a hadith where it doesn't the angel Gabriel command him to read. And yeah. if he was, if he I was cannot literate, write. I cannot he, read. Or what shall I write? Yeah, well, it, I, I'm just trying to find it. It's not like Al Bukhari. I'm trying to find the actual kind of quote. Yeah. Well, um, here's here's the deal. Here's the deal. Um, whether you can read or write um, is is not really the issue for me. The issue for me is these morons who follow him actually think that it's a sign of nobility. That's the right. Like this is the greatest example of mankind. He could not read or write. He could not learn how to read and write in over fifty something odd years. Okay. No one bothered to teach him how to read and write. And they somehow think this is a great virtuous thing. But yet. Even though he is the greatest example of mankind, they are to follow him down to how he went to the bathroom, okay, and how many, I mean, how he walked into the bathroom and how he left the bathroom, whether he shook it once or shook it twice or shook it three times. It don't matter when he was done, whether he used two or three stones to clean himself. They have to follow him, and that is a good deed that will get them in Jenna. But somehow, 
the fact that they say that this nobleman who could not read, who was illiterate, somehow they are better than him because they all like to learn how to read and write. They could do what their noble and righteous and pious and best example to mankind could not do. That to me is just pathetic, people. Just pathetic. when I was in Europe, there were there were imams that were very upset that many um, Muslims who couldn't read and write were saying it was. Well, because of Muhammad, why we don't need to read and write, and they were upset. <laughs> yeah, we're just following the Sunnah. There just, you go. Just, okay. they, just, they just follow. They just follow the the actual um, the, um, um, illiterate prophecy with their 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 illiteracy is the. Um... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, let me. Okay. What 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 I from from what I understand what it says in the Quran it is they follow the unlettered prophet, and what that can can be translated or interpreted to mean so in what when in the context of what it was what it's written is unlettered in uh jewish and christian scriptures is what it supposedly can it, some people <laughs> say that could i'm just, so, I'm just saying that some people take it that way, but, but could, most ahead. of them sit there and literally think that this is a sign from allah because he couldn't read and write so how did he know all this miraculous yeah. stuff about sperm coming from between the rib and the backbone if he didn't know how to read and write, how could he have read this? I, yeah, because, because he, he had out. temporal lobe epilepsy. He had these hallucinations. Yeah, sound like a. Or, 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 or he was a master in plagiarism. Oh, there you the, go. Yeah. I think it kind of. I think those two go together. <laughs> <laughs> have to make something up and then have a hallucination to back it up. <laughs> okay. Well, the bottom line is is that. Even if he did not know how to, or even if he did know how to read and write, he definitely didn't have, have a grip on what the Bible taught. Because in, when we look at what the Bible teaches on this, um, well, okay, first off, here, oops, oops, oops I got, let me put this up here. First off, this is a plagiarized story. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to compare it, make a comparison here in just a minute of, of the second Targum of Esther which is an early 7th century prior to Islam writing, oh, by the way, uh, and, and the story here. So it's, it's another one of those uh, examples of plagiarism. But when we look at uh, Solomon, Solomon spoke of tree, not to trees or heard from trees. He spoke of trees is what it says. Um, same thing with uh, the hyssop um, springs out of the... Um, and that comes out of the wall. He also uh, spoke of and not to animals or heard from animals or birds or whatever. He spoke of them to the Queen of Sheba. And what he was doing is, is he was showing her what a brilliant man he truly was. So when you look in King, First Kings and Second Chronicles, you can see that she was impressed with his, his knowledge and that it had to come from God. And so she ends up uh, giving God the glory for him and, uh, and, and, and becoming a convert. But when we look at this, uh, here you have uh, the, the, the Quran, and we talk and worry. Um, and first, and also the second target message, you have two writings. You have one that dates back to the second century and then one that dates uh, to early seventh century, just, just in case you wanna know why I have that up there. But here you have birds, and then you have a hoopty over here. You have a, it's a, they call it a red cock, but it can be recalled, re renamed a hoopty. Uh, you have uh, the hoopty going missing. Over here you have the uh, going missing. Uh, Terry not far away. And then you have a woman ruling. They hear about this woman uh, ruling the kingdom. And then, because there's, there's, a, there's a lot to it. That's why we're kind of going through this kind of fast. And then uh, let's see, here from Solomon sends the hoopty bird down to her. Um, let's see here, where do I have it? And this is where this is kind of the kicker that really seals Muhammad's fate, because it, it ends when she arrives to see King Solomon. Um, she saw um, what she thought was water, but it was it was not water; it was glass. Well, that's what they have in the second Targum and Esther. She, again, thinking it was a glass floor, lifts up her dress and uh, 
it, it, it's glass. It's not water. So, you know, and then Solomon, the, the, the second target of Esther said that she had hairy legs. So you have all kinds of um, uh, similarities here. You have Solomon, you have Queen of Sheba, you have a castle, you have a bird, you have a floor of glass, which is supposed to be water in her lifting dress. So you have all kinds of of, of different, uh, you know, you have all kinds of uh, points of congruence here between the two stories. We can see it was clearly plagiarized. There's all, all there's all kinds of plagiarisms um, in a Tron. If you ever want a good book on this, it's uh, by uh, St. Clair Tinsdale. Uh, if you ever want to uh, uh, go through a lot, you can see that I've I've spent some time in it because uh, because I have no life, but I've I've done a lot of reading. What's in the book? So I'm just the, the, the front, uh, the original source of the Chronicle. Okay. Yeah. Um, and also, there's two different versions of it that were sold. One is like only 120 pages, which is, I don't know, maybe the Cliff Notes part of it. This one's over, the one, the one that I have, get the one with over 200 pages. It's more um, explanative and, and has, has, has more information in it. Uh, okay. Uh, does anybody have anything where they want to comment about gin, uh, black magic, hoopty birds, talking ants? No. Yeah, no? the gin. The, the gin is fascinating to me. You know, gin actually, because you know this related to Jay uh, and um, um, Daughter of Christ, their their channel, which unfortunately they lost these great episodes they did. They had one where actually I think one of the ones that got a ban. She's reading from actual translation that she did of these women in Saudi Arabia who go to get gins, um, lusty gins, <laughs> lusty gins um, removed because they're being um, sexualized and having sex with gins in, their, in, in the night. Yeah, they really believe this stuff. But it actually turns out that the gin exorcist is actually the one that's raping them, but it's all to get the evil gin, the lusty gin out. So he's taking the gin out as he's having sex with her. I'm not making this up, dude. You can go ask Jay and Daughter of Christ. This this is all like real stories. Yeah. <laughs> Darcy. <laughs> They're virgins. Virgins, yes. <laughs> <There we go. laughs> but no, no, these these people are so bizarre. That yeah, that's in, in their beliefs, yes. That sounds uh, yeah, that doesn't it that I, uh, anyway, okay. So again, this is a historical uh this is a historical error uh made by made by uh, Muhammad. Okay, this next one. This next one's really got, this is kind of apropos for next week <clears throat> when we start talking about the um, about the crucifixion. And I'm not even going to cover the crucifixion of Christ today being a historical um, error. I'll wait uh, till next week in order to, you know, rehash um, all of that information that I put. In. And I didn't get, you know, what I was kind of uh, disappointed in is I didn't get any requests for that slideshow. Um, cause I told everybody, I said, if you want a copy of this slideshow where I provide you all of these, this, all of these sources with an explanation, not only the, the extra biblical sources, but also the biblical references for, uh, the crucifixion of Christ, you know, let me know and I'll send it to you. So if you guys want it, you, I don't, I don't mind. I mean, it's just three clicks is all it takes in order to, to send it to you. Eric Thekifer at gmail.com. And I'll be more than happy to, to send that out to you. Free of charge. You don't have to donate or anything. Okay, uh, so crucifixion. Let's let's talk about Quranic crucifixion. And we're not even going to go to the crucifixion of Christ. What we're going to do is we're going to focus on the crucifixion of Pharaoh. Oh, you know what? I forgot to put... Oh, let me put this in here. I forgot... Somebody remind me to talk about Joseph and coins being sold into slavery. Remind me to talk about that. I forgot to put that one in here. I knew I just it just occurred to me. Okay, uh, crucifixion. So when we look at uh, the, what the Quran says, the Quran says that uh, they uh, the Pharaoh would crucify people at the time of Pharaoh. Now this this occurs at the time of of the Pharaohs from ancient Egypt. Well, if you look in the Encyclopedia Britannica. Um, crucifixion was not invented until around 500 BC. And when we, when we think of, when we think of when this, this occurs, this, there's, there's like three different, three or four different spots where it talks about 
the Pharaoh prescribing crucifixion or cruci having people crucified. And one of them, two of them, I think are, I can't remember how, it, how many there are um, specifically, but the, it talks about crucifixion at the time of Joseph. When Joseph is in the presence of Pharaoh and he talks about crucifying the, the baker or the cup better, I can't remember which one uh, it references. That's 1800 BC. And then it also talks about crucifixion being used at the time of Moses, which would be 15, 1450, 1500 BC. When was crucifixion invented, folks? Look at right here. Even the Encyclopedia Britannica, which I don't consider a very credible source when it comes to things Islamic, uh, says that it wasn't invented until around 500 BC. And when we're talking about invented, we're, we're, we're obviously speaking about the time where it, it um, is widely used or is at least discussed. That's when we find it uh, used and being discussed is around 500 BC. That's a thousand years off, folks. That's at least a thousand. That is that in the time of Joseph, that's 1300 years off. Nobody mentioned it. Now, there are there is a reference. I don't know if I have this in here um, where it. No, nope, I don't have I don't have it in here. But there was a, a there's a reference to where it is. You the 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 Pharaoh is known as the Pharaoh of stakes or something like that. And the, the, the rescuing device that they came up was. The, the rescuing device that they came up with as well. What this is talking is about is using, uh, you know, people being impaled. Folks, if you know anything about punishments used in antiquity and, and beyond, impaling somebody is much different than crucifying somebody. Much different. Impaling, you don't languish on that thing for days. If you are impaled, you usually bleed out pretty quickly because of the internal injuries that occur. With crucifixion, you languish for days on that cross. And so that, that, these two are not even anywhere near to being close as the same thing. But so, Eric, Eric, they had the 11 herbs and spices that heal the crucifixion, even death on the cross. Don't you know that? Yes, That's I remember Jesus that. That's where... Yes. Is that when Shabir? Is that Shabir Ali's talking about yeah. how they? Yeah, you know, sure, yeah. They were we're gonna take aloe to the cave and rub that's it right. on his skin. That's and been ripped to shreds. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember that because because it, it's basically called the swoon theory, isn't it? The swoon theory. That's what it's commonly termed as. And the swoon theory has been deep for years. It's like why after they even kind of why after they even bring it up? It's like a like if you go into yeah, they um they fluctuate between the spoon theory and it making it look like Jesus. I, and I I, I, I yeah, and I'll I'll be discussing that next week. But the swoon theory is it cannot be correct, and the reason why is because Romans did not. I mean, if you did not, if that person did not die on that cross, you would die. I mean that that when we think of military order and discipline. The Romans were ruthless, folks. That's why they, this is why they call them the Iron Legions of Rome. These, these guys were very disciplined. And as a soldier, you're going to know if that person is going to die. And I, we've talked about this several times. You'd have to be an idiot not to know this by now if you watch the show. And if you, well, I'm, I don't want to call people idiots. Sorry. I'm going against my own little rules here. But anyway, if, when you're, if you are being crucified, you're hanging. What kills you is that you suffocate. It isn't, it isn't bleeding out. You, it's suffocation. You cannot, if you cannot push up to exhale, you're going to suffocate. So if you're just hanging there for 15, 20, 30 minutes, they know you're dead because you're not, you cannot breathe. And if you're not breathing, guess what happens? You die. So if you're hanging there and not moving, they know you're dead because in order to continue to live, live, you have to push up. This is why they broke the legs of the, the, the both of the thieves on each side of, of Jesus is to speed up this process. Because if your legs are broke and you're trying to push up, those bones are going everywhere and you can't push up and you suffocate. That's how they knew that they would kill them before the Sabbath came. So this idea of swoon theory is stupid. Plus, if you got somebody sh running a spear through your heart and lungs, 
this isn't like surgery, folks. This is you're going to bleed out internally for crying out loud. So it's it's really the swoon theory is probably the dumbest theory, I uh, in my opinion. But we'll see what happens next week anyway. Okay, a couple other things I wanted to add, uh, or one more thing I wanted to add to this. Um, if everybody would turn open their Quran to chapter five, verse thirty-three where it talks about punishing people for creating fitna in the land, creating, what, what's, what, um, not trouble, what's uh, corruption, there we go, corruption, creating corruption in the land. Allah, Allah, the God of the universe, says that if you create corruption in the land, fitna in the land, you are to uh, have both your hands and feet cut off on opposite sides, or be crucified. So here you have the, the God of the universe agreeing with the Pharaoh, essentially, is what is what was what you're doing. So, so Muhammad has the Pharaoh and the God of the universe prescribing the same type of punishment. It's sick. It's it's a historical error, a obvious historical error, and also it kind of gives you a little insight onto the mind of the author of the Quran, and it's definitely not not God. Okay, anybody else have anything they want to add to that? Because I was I was trying to find because you know the book is it the case of the resurrection uh, by by Gary Habermas and Mike Mike Lacona because in that book he kind of states the aspect of the medical condition of the actual aspect of the cross. Th there's no way that you'd actually survive even like the the actual um actual, I, i've got the book i'm just trying to find the exact quote that i'm trying to find i have the book i just I don't yeah to, uh, to go looking for it um but I, I i know what you're talking about as a matter of fact when i was uh, preparing for that debate two weeks ago i was <clears throat> i was i was going through some of the some of the items that they that they have brought up in there if you guys want a good read oh there's i forgot to i forgot to mention this um uh connie redid our our intro so i wanted to give her a public thank you ma'am uh, <laughs> for for getting that done so we don't get reported because evidently if you show a picture of al husseini the grand mufti of jerusalem and adolf hitler sitting together evidently that's hate speech is connie in the room with us uh no let's see here she said she left for a few minutes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lady, go sit your behind this? down in the corner somewhere until we call your name. Lady, go sit your behind down in the corner somewhere until we call your name. Lady, That's go sit your behind line. down in the corner somewhere until we call your name. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Somebody tell Kenny to shut up. All right. Uh, I may please allow you yourself the first and last word in the debate, which really became. You know really something? Good. When right. when uh, we're not showing pictures of the truth, that means we're following Sharia law. You know, they want us to follow Sharia law because criticizing, they're seeing that as criticism of, you know, something Islamic or what, what they have done. Oh, you're, you're talking about YouTube and their community yeah, standards? Yeah, yeah. yeah so that means that they got some Muslims, some jihadists. Trust, yes, trust and safety team, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I agree, I, I agree. It's, it's, it's just kind of the game that we're sentenced to play, unfortunately, and I and I really hate it. But, you know, if you want, if this is the you know platform that you're going to use and this is the game that you're going to play, like Rad has said, go over to Rumble if uh, if you can um, and set up set up an account there because they there you don't have to worry about um, this, you know, this this nonsense of these jihadis coming at at you. OK, uh, Rad, what did you do? Are you up here twice or? Yeah, you're in here twice. Now you're. Only once. Okay. So, uh, Allah the Crucifier. Let's move on to the next one. The next one is the Tower of Babel and Haman. Now, Haman, Christ. yeah, Haman is, okay, he appears in the Quran in chapter 28, verse 38, and chapter 40, verses 36 and 37. And here's what it says Pharaoh said, O nobles, you have no other God that I know of except myself. O Haman, make me bricks of baked clay and build for me a tower that I might climb to the God of Moses, for I think he's a liar. 
Okay, so here we have Muhammad getting, I don't know how many things wrong here. Um, number one, towers did not exist in Egypt. This is this is a historical fact. This is a this is a, an archaeological fact. They do not have towers in Egypt. The second, and, and you know, they they built pyramids out of hewn stones. Is 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 another thing. But here, right here, this is kind of an interesting thing. It says up here, baked clay. They did not use baked clay. They used baked clay um, in the Babylonian Empire with Nebuchadnezzar. If you remember the story of uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, in the fire. Well, what fire are they in? Well, they're in a kiln. They're in a furnace to bake clay. But in the time of Moses, what did what did the Pharaoh use? What did, remember, he took he took away the straw because they were making clays. They were sun dried. They were sun. I think you say baked. I guess they baked bricks. Um, were not used in Egypt. They were sun-dried bricks. I don't know what you would call them, but they did not bake them. Here we are. This says sun-dried bricks is what they are. Um, so when we look at the Tower of Babel, the Tower of Babel occurs in Genesis. He's thinking of Nimrod, not Haman. This is Nimrod. So he's getting, you know, if we're, when we're talking about using a, a book like the Bibles, and you're saying, okay, well, the Quran has come to, the Quran is the criterion coming to correct the Bible. So what he's essentially saying is, is that, okay, the Quran, I mean, this is what Muslims will say. They said the, the Quran comes to fix the corrupted Bible, you know, you know, that Bible has been so corrupted. So what they're saying is, is that, okay, this corrupted Bible has the Tower of Babel in the wrong location. The Tower of Babel did not occur uh in in our occur, it occurred in uh egypt moses uh was at the tower of babel don't you see um and let's see the tower of babel would have probably been around what 2200 2300 bc maybe 2400 bc you know and moses is 1400 bc 1500 bc that's a thousand years so they're way off on on the, on the and then, then you have haven which is like even even we're getting, we're getting to that now. Like, yeah, like you've got, got them completely wrong time period. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's, yeah. It's okay, like, so this this tower is in southern Iraq is where it is. So they're, they're not, they're, I mean, they're, they're, they're not in Egypt. And they're using bricks, the wrong kind of bricks to build it. So Muhammad is screwing up the the biblical account of this now is that a historical error well if you consider the bible to be a uh a reliable book when it comes to commenting on history yeah this is definitely a historical error and when we let's see many centuries from the time of the pharaohs um okay it's an accuracy okay here's another one about this story here right here um Haman was a minister, is said to be a minister at the court of Pharaoh that reigns at the time of Moses. The problem with this, just as Dominic was alluding to, historically, this is a name that we find later. Uh, it was not used at the time of Moses. And more importantly, it's not an Egyptian name, but it is a unique Babylonian name. Folks, this is an important thing to understand. We have all kinds of archaeological evidence from Egypt. We have a ton of it. And the reason why is because of the arid conditions uh, was able to preserve it. Not one piece of archaeological evidence from Egypt of all the names we have. Like, for example, if you go to, uh, there's a tell in Goshen where they were able, they found a, like a ledger of some sort and it had all kinds of names in it. And many of the names that were in this ledger were submitted, which gives a good indication that the Jews lived there at one time. 
Yeah, but you silly trapper. Don't you know that the lack of evidence in Islam is evidence of its perfect <laughs> preservation, of its miracle? I mean, seriously, don't you understand the reason why there is no evidence for any of Islam's claims is because the Quran says the Jews wiped it out because the Jews knew Muhammad was coming. They were waiting all this time for their prophet. So when he finally came, they destroyed all evidence of him. Don't you see this? Alhamdulillah! Take this shit out of <laughs> okay uh i i, I yeah um it, it, it's it's a jewish conspiracy that's 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 it that is the res rescuing device as far as uh i was listening to a, a muslima talking to i think it was to god logic last week this week or whatever and she said it, the all of the all of the evidence for the injil was destroyed by the roman catholic church because the problem with that is that you've got Daniel Wallace's um, evidence that you've got manuscripts that date all the way back to the second century, and it's, it's like kind of any any Muslim that states that is kind of it's it's stupid. It's like we we've got manuscripts that date earlier than that. I was up in St Catherine's Monastery and I was seeing like you, you can go and see manuscripts today. It, like from the second third century, like uh, up in Manchester, we we have the we have P45, the John Rylands fragment, the dates from the second century. You have early manuscripts of Paul, the date from the Chester Beatty Library, the date that for it's like it's like why do why do Muslims even bring this up? Because we've got we, we, we've got the whole Bible before the seventh century anyway. So well, it's, it's not only that. I mean, think about this. So you've got the the Byzantine Church and the Latin Church. These two were not friendly with each other during the time of Muhammad. Okay. Actually, for some time, okay? Actually, a lot of the Crusades were Crusades against the Byzantines. <laughs> they sat Constantinople a couple times. You know what I mean? So so either way, how are you going to destroy this evidence of the Islamic and Geo? You know, they are just so, I mean, desperate. And I can tell you, I am sorry. This is one of the reasons why I am a Calvinist. Is because you can rationalize with these people all you want. You can show them all the evidence. And it is supernatural. God says no. You will not believe this. You know what I mean? It, it really is to me. I, I mean, that's the only way it explains it. You know. But anyway, that's just me. But go ahead. Sorry. Well, I, again, I don't, I don't see how you just can continually make things up and say, well, the evidence was destroyed when you have clear archaeological evidence showing number one that uh, the name Haman is not Egyptian; it's it's a Persian name or a Babylonian name. And Haman, in this case, the, the, the historical records of the biblical testimony, he doesn't live until the 5th century B.C. Here you having him live 1500 B.C. This is the thousand years off. And this is, I think, I honestly believe that this is where Muhammad just could not keep his story straight when he was trying to, I mean, it, it's, it's true. I mean, when you look at somebody that, People that are dishonest, and I, I, I don't, I don't have a problem saying that, this at all. I believe that Muhammad was a dishonest charlatan, and when he went to tell these lies, he just could not keep these personages that he's inventing these stories about straight. And in the process, in the process, you know, he hears all these things and they, they sound great. He just can't remember, okay, Haman. Haman was against the Jews. Oh, yeah, well, he must be with the Pharaoh because the Pharaoh also was against the Jews. So these two must have been in. So when he tells these stories to an illiterate culture, a culture that is, you know, predicated on paganism, they said, oh, that sounds perfect to me. Why not? They don't have a they don't have a, a knowledge of it. But when he does go to tell it to the Bana Kanuka, the Bana Nadir, and the Bana Karaisa tribes, they're like, You're you're a fraud. What the heck are you talking about? Amon's from Esther, and now you're talking saying these things with Pharaoh? Get out of here. So what does he do? Well, he kills him. That's always the, the, the quickest answer. Kill. Him. Or he exiled two of them. He, um, if you if you watch the Passions of Evidence series to do with the exile. Uh, the patterns of evidence to do with the Exodus, where he kind of goes through the archaeology of the of the actual Exodus. It's a, it's, oh, it's the called... movie patterns of evidence. Is that what you're saying? Patterns of evidence. Yeah, I'm just. Yeah, saying... I've seen that. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I have it here somewhere. Because uh... because he's he's released more 
more stuff on that. So there's also, the, but there's also uh, I've also put on the link the fact of um, that there's 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 archaeology to do with Esther. So there's archaeology that dates I think uh, in in one of the Louvre. Uh, I can't remember which which there's the there's all the records to do with that like, like from that time period in, in, in one of the french in one of the french museums there's a there's a channel that's that's done a two-part series it, it, it won on 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 the fact of the archaeology to do with esther as well so, so, so essentially i mean if you're esther Heyman, it's like and and and, the, and, the, and like babylon it's just like you've got uh, three completely different locations that are thousands of years apart. It's, it's yeah. like it just doesn't historically make any sense at all. Well, here's it, here's what I was I was I was trying to think of of a way. Um, you know, when you start having discussions with, because I I got into it this week with um one of one of my Facebook friends who's a Muslim. And, you know, I got to thinking about, and I don't mean to say this in like a, a derogatory way, but, you know, this is, this is, this is how I feel. You know, let's say you're trying to have a, con uh, a conversation with somebody about Shakespearean literature and, for example, maybe Hamlet or Macbeth or something like that. And you're talking about, you know, the tone and the, the depth of, you know, literary genius that, that Shakespeare, Shakespeare had and then the person that you're discussing this with wants to use well that sounds great but I have this comic strip here Charlie Brown that I would really that that is just as good and useful and, and it just it you can't I mean it's it, that, that's what you feel like sometimes because when you're having people that it's obviously an obvious histor historical error here you have a Babylonian name a Babylonian name that is uh, a thousand years removed, and you have no evidence, you have zero evidence for anybody of that name being in Egypt at all, and you know this guy was a, a, an antagonist against the Jews, and then you put the two together, the Pharaoh was an antagonist against the Jews, and you use Haman, who was antagonist to the Jews. Muhammad just could not get it straight. So he said, well, the two must have collaborated against the Jews or something. I don't know. Okay. Um, so patterns of evidence, if you, uh, Mahoney, I can't remember his first name. Yeah, Tim, this movie. Tim, Tim, Tim Mahoney, there you go. Mahoney. Uh, there's four movies he's made. He's made patterns of evidence. Four. It's, it's like, I think, I think he's got one on Israel that's just coming out. I think it's one that's six. Okay. Okay. So he's, he's done two just on the Sinai. Yeah. The, one of them deals with, uh, the ling how did, how did Moses know how to write? Uh, it was called the Moses controversy. And the other one is the, the Red Sea crossing. I think he's got two yeah. on that. Okay. But he, and he, they're, they're, they're informative. Uh, I, like everything else, take it with a grain of salt, uh, weigh the evidence, weigh the sources, um, and the people that he has upon pining in them and you come to your own conclusion. Um, but he, he does a good job of presenting the, the information. Okay. Our next favorite figure. You guys are going to like this one. Da, 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 da. Alexander the Great. Okay, so <laughs> Alexander the Great, uh, he was, of course, we all know he's this uh, king of Macedonia, lived in the 4th century BC, great military leader, conquered almost the entire known world. Great prophet um, in Islam, great pagan homosexual prophet in Islam. <laughs> the best problems the okay you okay get off of that he's not trans at least he's not <laughs> trans get off of it um he's known as dual our current which is the tune horned one he gets this because um he ruled both east and the west and there is evidence of this uh of a coin coins that showed him having two horns um Let's see, and the Quran presents him as, as this righteous man of God, and God spoke directly to him. If you go to chapter 18 and uh, verses 83 to 98, here you have this conversation. But history, again, this is a historical error. History does not tell us that he was a good Muslim. And when I say good Muslim, folks, I am not used, I, I, even in the most liberal sense, because we all know Jesus was a Muslim, right? Right. He's um, my, like I said, he's my favorite homosexual drunk prophet of Islam. He really is. <laughs> okay. Your favorite one. Well, there must be many. Um, 
when we think of uh, him being a Muslim, there is no way in God's green earth that this guy is a Muslim. He was definitely not a monotheist. Um, he was definitely not somebody that uh, bowed to a rock in Mecca at all or anything as such. So we, we know he was not a Muslim. Um, so well, there's all kinds well, of different... Hold on a second. What? If they're saying that, that Alexander was a Muslim, aren't they saying that Islam was originally polytheistic. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. Uh, that that obvious thought never entered my little small brain. Well, yeah, they're the ones who talk about the, the I mean the Kaaba <laughs> being filled with polytheism. So, yeah, yeah, they have a they have a polytheistic prophet. There you go. Okay. That that includes two of them. Uh, okay, uh, let's see here. He was yeah, right there. It's right here. He was a polytheist. Yep. Yeah. Um, and he wanted, he said that he was the son of Amon. He said he was the God, the son of a, of the sun God of Egypt. So this does not sound like somebody who is, uh, what you would say a Muslim or a very pious individual. Um, what else has we got here? He said that, uh, he did not travel West as they claimed in, in the Quran. And also, I'm leaving out the part where it said that he traveled so far west. What did he find? The sun setting in a muddy pool of water. Yes. And the people nearby said, hello. I see you guys see the sun over here setting in the muddy pool. We'll see you in the morning. Okay. He ne I can promise you he never found that. And no, and also, I would say, when I, when I was reading this in the Quran, it does not say as if because that was the common argument that i that i've heard that the sun was setting as if it was in a muddy pool of water it does not say that it does not say that it says the sun was setting in a muddy pool of water what else do we have on him he um he made this big wall now folks this is what what, what uh which you should be focusing in on he constructed this big wall made of iron and brass between two mountains, and it was going to last until the end of time. Okay. Where... And that's why, that's why the U.S. invaded Afghanistan, was to find the big wall and destroy the big wall so it would usher in the Dajjal. Don't you understand that? I mean, seriously, come on. Here. I was not read in on that. Op order, sorry. Um, did not hear about it. Um, yeah, and, and here's this is how we know this is a historical error. This is this is a lie. Number one, there's no wall. If there's no wall that was going to blast until the end of time. And if I check my watch lately, there's still time. So it had we haven't reached the end of time yet. We haven't found this wall, but at the same time, we haven't found Noah's Ark either. But we haven't found Noah's Ark. Why? Because it's made of wood and it's probably completely dissolved. So I wouldn't plan on finding Noah's Ark anyway because it's been over 4,000 years, 5,000 years, however many years you want to take. This was made out of brass and iron. This would leave what we'd say would leave a mark. This would leave some type of evidence. We would find this somewhere. Even with our little satellites beaming down on the earth, we would find something like there would be some type of evidence for this. So why does this appear in the Quran? Thank you for asking. Thank you for asking. Uh, let's see here. Um, is, isn't it bigger than the Great Wall of China, from what I've kind of heard? Uh, no, it's taken from this right here. Here we go. Um, right here. This is a fictional legend from a Syrian author that wrote it around 521 BC or AD. And it's based on, and this, what it was written, was based on an ancient legend of Alexander the Great. So again, again, you have a plagiarized story appearing in the Quran, but not only is it plagiarized, and we don't want to sit here and you know go through all of the elements that have to that have to be present in order to demonstrate plagiarism, but even if it's not plagiarized, Muhammad still has this wrong because there is no wall that has been found, or nor will be found. I would say, with, as a matter of fact, let me just let me just say this. Let me make sure everybody understands this. If they do find a wall like this, if they do find a wall, wall like this, I will convert to Islam. 
I'm, I'm just saying because the, the, I mean, if the, if somebody is going to make up, I mean, such a fanciful story. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't convert to Islam. I take. Let me let me take that back. There's no way I would bow to a rock in the desert five times a day. But 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 let me just say this: it would definitely make me raise an eyebrow and say, well, maybe there is something to this this Quran or something along the, uh, yeah, <laughs> like <a> Rob, <laughs> a plagiarized story in the Quran. Say it isn't so. It <laughs> can't be right. Who, who would come up with such a lie? What a dastardly deed there. Okay. Uh, does anybody want to add anything about Alexander the Great um, being a pious Muslim, which is a historical error? So you actually have two historical errors here. Number one, Alexander the Great was not a pious Muslim. Alexander the Great was a pagan. Number two, there is no wall here. And number three, there was no, the sun does not set in a muddy, just for some of you flat earthers, the sun does not set in a muddy pool of water. Just just saying. Okay. Uh, this next one you're all going to love. Dun, 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 the magic pony ride. Franz says, glory to be him who made his servant go by night from the sacred mosque of Mecca to the furthest mosque whose surroundings have been blessed. Okay, so this is called, not the Hijra, this is called the Mirage. Mirage or whatever, something of those lines. Number one, nobody witnessed this. Number two, number two, this occurred in 620. This, uh, this occurred in 20, 620. There's no tangible evidence for this, but the thing that, uh, let's see here, that caught my eye uh, is that the, oh, it's like, okay, I, let me, let me just, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. Number one, number one, this, 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 this mosque thought to be Jerusalem did not exist in seven or in, uh, when this was supposed to occur, what was that? 620. This is supposed to occur in 620. It did not exist. The mosque that they're talking about, al Aska. Uh, was not started to be built until uh, 691. They started building the Dome of the Rock in Al Mosque or Al Aska at the same time. Al Aska was not completed until 705. Some people put it at 715, but uh, most people put it at 705 AD. This Muhammad died in 632, folks. This is supposed to happen in 620. How can you ride a magic pony from Mecca all the way to Jerusalem? Number one. Number two, how can you go to a mosque and pray in a mosque that is not going to be built for 80 plus years? Number two. And number three, number three, you have no evidence for it. There's no evidence for this. None. Zero. Zippo. Zilch. This is uh, nothing more than Abu Bakr. Not Abu Bakr. Uh, Uthman. No, Omar. I'm sorry. Let me get it right. Uh stealing land and having it justified by inventing this hadith saying this was Jerusalem um, later on. So the construction did not, so they're, they're off on this. This is an accuracy. I'm not a correction Kaffirs. Don't you know that they have proof for the night journey? Because in the middle of the night, when the winged donkey jackass, oh no, I'm sorry. When the wing whatever was returning with Muhammad, the it made a terrible noise in the desert. It caused a camel to drop it dead. And everybody heard <laughs> it. That is the proof. That just really, really happened. It's true. It's true. Our brother. I mean, when, I, when I say this stuff, I mean, this is what Muslims have told me over the years. I'm not making it up. Uh, this, is, this is actual what they believe. Yeah, we we also believe that ele elephants can fly as well. Is the yeah, <laughs> elephants can fly. Is the, um, so yeah, well, I've, I've seen. I there's a story that's in the Quran that I did not put in this uh, of elephants attacking Mecca. Should we because should we should we liken it to Dumbo or or do you think Dumbo right. is a better story than them? <laughs> well, I mean, think about it. I mean, how is a how is an elephant going to get enough water? Period. I mean, if you only get four inches of water a year in Mecca, how, how is an elephant that drinks 20 gallons, 50 gallons a day going to survive? It, it, it makes Jeez, no sense. Islamic elephants. <laughs> 
Okay, let's uh, jump back over here. Okay, so he could not, he did not pray in any mosque because the mosque was not, I mean, even the Dome of the Rock wasn't finished until 691 or they didn't start building it until 691. I think it was finished in 693. Um, the Jewish temple had been destroyed uh, in 70 AD, so he hadn't, wasn't praying there. And when you look at this again, 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 plagiarism, please say it's not so, but it, this sounds just like a, Zoroastrian story uh, that uh, was circulating uh, before Muhammad. Let's see, it's 400 years before Muhammad in this, in this book. Okay, so the bottom line is, is that here you have this night journey that nobody, that, that, that they even, they even, even Aisha, there's a hadith that Aisha says that he was here all night. He didn't go anywhere. So there are some people, I think there's a hadith that says that this was a vision. Well, if you're having a vision from God, I guess anything's possible. And that would be the only way that this would make sense if it was a vision. Unfortunately, most Muslims don't agree that it was a vision. Most Muslims think that this was an actual journey that Muhammad got on this pony, this, this Pegasus. And that's basically what it is. It is a winged horse, a winged flying animal that was very popular in folklore and legend at the time in story in, in storytelling and so this is what you get a lot of these stories that occurred in these legends and lore this is exactly what you would expect to find uh in a book of fiction like this okay let's go to the next one the kibla kibla this is where you have hard physical evidence you have uh, the Quran mandating that the prayer be uh, changed facing Mecca. Uh, what year was this? It was 623. You have this. Um, you have this. Uh, this. This revelation. This. This verse here. What is it? Uh, well, it's in several places. That looks like uh, where it was changed. Okay, fine. It was changed in 623. Remember. Mecca was still a pagan city in 623. Mecca, the Kaaba, still remember the stories that we that, that we hear how Muhammad went and uh, when he conquered Mecca without firing a shot. That did not occur. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't that not occur until like 629 or something? Very late in his life, where he was finally able to go. So if this is changing the the Qibla direction to Mecca. You're, you're, you're orienting your Qibla direction to a city that is still pagan, to a Kaaba that is still having all these pagan uh, shrines in it. Why would you do that? Gee whiz. I don't know. Maybe you're making it up. Um, and when you look oh, at maybe the, Maybe Islam, again, was, was polytheistic originally. <laughs> Well, I that's I, I agree with you, Paul. I mean, that, that I think that is the obvious the the obvious uh, conclusion is that it was just a set of practices, religious practices that were developed from a pagan culture, and they tried to adjoin them to something uh, biblical, and that's exactly what 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 looks like what what happened here. Um, okay, so what I want to get to though is the evidence for this, why, why we know this is a historical error. And we know this is historical error because of the archaeological evidence that we have. The archaeological evidence that we have today clearly shows that the earliest mosques did not face Mecca. None of them did. You do not have a mosque facing Mecca until the 8th century, folks. Well over 100 years or maybe up to 100 years after the death of Muhammad, do you finally have a mosque uh, facing Mecca? And I know there's this big controversy. So, oh, they're facing Petra. They're facing, uh, you know, out there, you know, it's the Nabataeans. If you want to make that argument, you go ahead. The bottom line is, I don't care. The bottom line is, is that they were not facing Mecca. So what's what, why, why, why is this a problem? Well, because the earliest mosque, if this was, if you were told to pray in this certain direction, and Paul, if you go to Paul's channel, the Sutlithian Report, we have been going through, or he's been going through very succinctly, um, the what invalidates your prayer and how to pray. And if you're not facing the right direction, is that prayer validated? Is that prayer valid, Paul? 
you can't if you don't face the right direction, your prayers invalid. If you fart, then your prayers invalid. There's so many things. <laughs> I would There's have so a definite many... problem. I would because oh. I, I get very gassy when I. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, you know, the part that kills me. I get some, I get some is, whoopee cushions. Hey guys, 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 what guys. kind of? Guys, guys, I found out that there is this fart spray. Okay. The reason why I found out is evidently at one of the um, pro um, Hamas protests at Columbia University, somebody unleashed a canister of this stuff, this bark spray. <laughs> you know, on Amazon. Oh, yeah, they, they, they freaked out. They thought the Israelis were using chemical weapons on them and all kinds of stuff. Turns out he was just playing a prank. He ordered it on Amazon for 26 bucks. Anyway, what I'm thinking is we get this cans of fart spray, we go into the mosque, and we unleash. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, you know, you know, I is, I'm, go ahead. Paul. The kid story here is that on my show, we were discussing this the first time. The, the, the sad, sorry truth is we were sitting here laughing on the show about how a fart could invalidate prayer. And somebody said, no, no, you don't understand. This is serious. They just lynched a guy in Pakistan for farting in a mosque. Well, yeah, so that yeah. should make you think. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Um, I was gonna okay, cancel, gonna, cancel gonna, the gonna, fart bomb spray. I'm praying, cancel the fart bomb spray. Okay, I'm just gonna, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what a loser I am. I, you ever get on Facebook and you see those short videos? Have you, you guys know what I'm talking about? Like Facebook shorts. Okay, there was this kid, he was playing a practical joke on his mom, and he left this bouquet of flowers on the front porch or some type of flower on the front porch, supposed, supposed to be given by the dad. And he sprays it with this fart spray. <laughs> and mom comes up. He comes up like two hours later, whatever, pulls up and shows the car pulling in the driveway, her walking up the steps. And she sees it. She's like, oh, and she goes over and grabs it, takes a big old whiff of it. And she starts, <laughs> she starts getting this gag reflex. <laughs> 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 and you're watching this poor woman. I didn't know if her son did this to her. <laughs> what kind of sick joke would you do? Why would you do that to your mom? But anyway, the fart spray thing and the farting invalidating prayers. <laughs> um, yeah, that's all. Go to Paul's channel. He has. We had. We're, we're going through the, the 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 Sharia line by line, paragraph by paragraph, and it is in there. It's 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 as long as the day is long, but when we look at this kibla, okay, let's get back to the kibla. The kibla, um, folks, the kibla direction being changed is 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 very problematic, and being in the Quran instead of in the Hadith is very problematic because here we know that the Quran is wrong as far as the kibla direction is is concerned, changing it to Mecca. Either that, or for a century, Muslims didn't listen to the Quran and kept praying in the wrong direction. There are several mosques that we have. And, oh, let me just do this. Let me just do this right here. This is a great book written by Dan Gibson that talks about these kiblas. And he provides all kinds of graphs, their directions. He has the floor plans, pictures of the floor pans, um, all kinds of documented evidences where these kiblas all over the world are facing the wrong direction. We have archeological evidence showing that the Kibla direction did not face Mecca for a century. And even then it was a process of these, these, these mosques when they were being constructed, eventually facing Mecca. Sometimes they were facing in between, sometimes they're facing, you know, who knows where they're facing, but they weren't facing Mecca for a full century. Um, and I lift the sources up here that the article uh, that I, I gra grabbed a lot of this information from uh, had. Uh, the Wasit Mosque is off by 30 degrees. 30, uh, the Baghdad Mosque is off by 30 degrees. The Kufa Mosque, uh, one of the earliest ones. Face, and folks, this is in this, folks, the Kufa Mosque is in oh, Egypt. The Kufa Mosque. Uh oh, somebody's got yes, their. Yes, hey, yes, yeah, uh kufa if i'm not mistaken is in egypt am i correct on that it's facing west it, 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 anyway it it does not face south like it should like it should like it should 
it's facing it's Kufa's not in Egypt. Kufa is in it's in northern Arabia, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember. But anyway, it's facing that one's facing the wrong direction. They're all facing the wrong direction. The Fawcett Mosque, that's what I was thinking that. The Fawcett Mosque is uh, is painting is is pointing north. Here it's Egypt. Which direction? If the mosque, if you're building a mosque in Egypt, which direction should should the Qibla be facing? I would think southeast. If, if you know that, that that's just me. I mean, if I, my geography. This is why I, I, I got the Kufa one mi mixed up because it's a Fusa mosque in Egypt. It should be facing southeast. This one's facing north. Why is that? Well, because they did not have. Uh, this this uh, the, this I, that the idea that Mecca is go supposed to be the actual uh, place of uh, the center of worship solidified in Islam. Okay, possible rescuing devices. I mean, look at some of the excuses they come up with. They said that uh, the early Muslims are incapable of defining direction, which is this, this is not true. I mean, there's all kinds of reasons why it's not true. Um, the all of the seventh century mosques that they built were facing Jerusalem. Um, so they could find direction. If they're all facing Jerusalem and they're supposed to be facing this common direction, that tells us that, that you can find the direction. Um, Arabs were very well astute to finding their way through Arabia. If you didn't, well, you died early. Um, the early mosques in Iraq and Egypt were built by uh, civilized people that were very familiar with direction. And, you know, the only explanation that you can come up with is that the actual direction of the Qiblas of the early mosque of Jerusalem is that the Quran was in fluid, formative state, just as Paul uh, was alluding to. And when we start, you know, I don't, I don't want to get into all the details on that, and you know, how the Quran developed and how a lot of this information has been redacted back upon its history. But it's obvious, it is obvious by of, of examining the archaeological evidence, especially for the Qibla directions, that there's something going on here, that it was not... It is not what it appears to be or said to be. Okay, this one's easy. This one's easy. David's coats of mail. David wore chain mail, according to um, the Quran. Chapter 34, 10 and 11 said that he had um, a coat, uh, a armor of iron rings. And God made him soft iron. The problem with this is David lived around 1000 B.C. David lived around 1000 BC. David lived about 1000 BC and he has chainmail. The problem with this is that chainmail is not invented until around 400 or 300 BC by the Celts on a completely different continent. Let me re-say this. David is supposed to be wearing Chainmail in 1000 BC. Chainmail is not invented until 700 or 700 years later by the Celts on a completely different continent. This is a historical error. This is a obvious historical error. This cannot be true. This would be written by somebody who has no idea of the historical development of armor. And folks, armor is very is very important to understand in its uh, implementation and usage, especially as fast as warfare uh, can advance in technology and its its development. So this is something that you should at least should know, as just having a precursor understanding of military history. Muhammad obviously did not. He obviously did not know that chainmail was not in, developed at the time of. David, he made an okay, error. Okay. This is not. Well, hold on, Rand. Hold on, Rand. I want to make this last point. This is show. This clearly shows that the Quran is not from God. This is a obvious historical error. Okay, go. Sorry. Okay, clearly. See, this is what you're not understanding. You come from the Quran came to correct everything. So that you you come up with your your Kafir history, your Kafir science. Don't you understand that the only true history is Quranic science? That that <laughs> that, 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 that your Kafir science and your Kafir history contradicts the Quran. I, as a Muslim, must believe in the Quran. 
Because clearly the Quran, and that's what makes the Quran from the Word of God. That is the evidences that the Quran is from the Word of God because it contradicts your Kufar history and science. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's right. And then it's, it's it, like I said, discussing Shakespearean literature with somebody that is using Charlie Brown as their source. This is this is what it's like. It is. I mean, it, I'm serious. This is what what it's what it's like. Okay. Uh, did anybody oh, have, have anything like you want to add to that? You, I like Charlie Brown. I don't make fun of him. There's <laughs> nothing wrong. I mean, Charles Schultz was. It was the guy was a. You know, I would say that he was in his own way a literary genius. Okay, fine. But it's I would a cartoon. Charlie it's Brown, not meant. Over the Quran yes. or Hadith. Charlie Brown, Dr. Seuss over the Quran. Okay. Charlie Brown over what? What'd you say? <laughs> Charlie Brown and Dr. <laughs> Seuss <laughs> over Brown. the Quran. Okay, <laughs> Dr. Seuss would probably be better. There you go. <laughs> Cat in a hat. There you go. Okay. That's. I mean, that's what it's like, though. I mean, it's just. It's just mind boggling. That you you know that you try to carry on a, a serious conversation using the historical method, the historical facts, as a basis for your argument, and you keep inventing these things. Well, it could have been, should have been, kind of, kind of, you know, the NGO was bad. Shut up. Good night. You sound. It, it makes you sound moronic. Okay, Doctor. Come on, Paul. Okay, fine. Okay, uh, Doctor Seuss was a genius too. He was. Okay, fine. He was a genius. But it's a cartoon for Pete's sake. <laughs> this is supposed to be a work from God, and it's not. Okay, uh, the Golden Calf. Woo, this is one of my favorites. The Golden Calf, Mount Sinai stuff. Um, they they have a Samaritan helping uh, construct this Golden Calf for the Israelites. Um, this is a problem because the Samaritans did not exist at the time of Moses. Moses uh, was thought to have lived around 14, 1500 BC. The Samaritans did not come into existence as a people until at least when the Northern Kingdom was carried off in Israel around 722 BC. At least. So this is at least seven centuries off. And also, again, if you're using, if you're using your, if you're going to correct the Bible, it wasn't Moses who helped or that built the calf. It was Aaron who built the calf, not Moses. So again, you're, you're number one, you're, you're, you're off as far as your historic, you know, the historicity of this is concerned, where you're saying that <laughs> that's just wrong. <laughs> George Carlin is more of a prophet, yeah. Um, okay, the the history of this is just it's just it's just way off. I mean, you cannot ha you cannot have a person from this time period, 1450, 1500 BC, from a people group that did not exist. Muhammad would not have known this. This is this again. This is a gross historical error, and we know using the historical method that the Northern Kingdom was carried off. Uh, by the Assyrian Empire, um, and when we when the when the Bible appear uh, you know opines upon all of this type of stuff, um, you have uh, who is this? This is Steve is with us today. Hi, Steve. Good to see hey, you. Hey, how are you? I was just going to say I was just going to talk about your song about Muhammad's uh, famous pony ride, magic pony ride, where you changed that. <laughs> And that I forgot, was, I, I had written it down. As a matter of fact, I wrote it down right here, and I, I got distracted probably by by Rad or somebody who got me off. But anyway, I was gonna I was gonna mention that. Um, so because Steve, the, what what song did you get? Did, did you copy that from or use that from? Uh, uh, it was from Magic Carpet Ride. It was actually David Wood's idea. I was on his program, okay. and then he he got one of his you know ideas, and uh, it was Magic Donkey Ride. <laughs> and uh, I, I actually did the song, and I uh, Hatun Tash had a big song, Islamic song contest, and I I submitted mine, and uh, she never played it, and so, but yeah, I did I did have it, and uh, I, I think I have it somewhere. I don't know where it is though. Well, if you find it, and just I, 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 it's hilarious. 
Um, yeah, and David's got the evilest mind too when it comes on and, and taunting, taunting just, Muslims over their time. He, yeah, he comes. I mean, anybody that would come up with an idea of Islamicize me, <laughs> that I mean, that is like a solid month of evil thought going on. Uh, just, uh, hey, can I can I show something? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This this is a this is uh this is one of my uh outreach videos. Uh I think some of you guys sometimes oh yeah, you watch me sometimes when I'm out there in front of the Oh balls. yeah, yeah, oh. you'll pop up on my feed and I'm like, well, you'll see what Steve's doing. Oh well, at least they're not cutting his head off. We're he's good. Yeah. But if you watch a, what he does, he goes this is okay, folks. If you don't know Steve, Steve he, he's he goes to a mosque, or no, he doesn't go to the mosque. He sits right outside of a mosque with a cross, and he engages Muslims when they're coming out of their mosque. And he does this live on uh, on his Facebook page. And he and we were so because he got into a tuffle one night, and Rad and I had this great idea. Said, okay, well, look, if this if somebody is going to cut Steve's head off, what we want to do is we want to get this on camera. So we set up a body cam, we set up a body cam to capture this. And I'm not, I'm not sure what happened to the body cam. But, you know what? Uh, it was like, that was, uh, I had fun with that body cam, man. It's like, uh, but this is, uh, can you sh show this? Yeah, go ahead. Are You're you on the screen? It's on the screen. Go ahead. It's and on the screen. Okay. This is, uh, this was uh, last week here. So I don't know if it, if this is the, exactly the right. Um, oh, wait a second. No, sorry. This is my program. Um, I think you got better intro music than I do. I'm jealous. <laughs> you know what? It's uh, stolen. I mean, uh, you know, I be careful because they'll, 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 you saw what happened to Jai's uh, channel. Yeah, what happened? What is that? I mean, I don't copy I heard... too many. There's too many copyright complaints against oh. the channel, and if you get reported for that a certain amount of time, they just terminate your channel altogether. Oh, really? And it's it's the same thing. You know, it's it's all these trolls out there. That's all they do. They have nothing better to do with their life other than troll your channel and look for things to report you on. Okay. Shoot. Uh, one thing I don't understand about that is why not just like make a response video if you don't agree with the content. Just do like give liberty and write a response for you saying that because you disagree they're with it. trolls. Lisa. This is what they do. They're not you and you. You know this. They're not engaged. They're not interested in engagement. Okay. But I love you. That's what okay. Okay, go ahead, Steve. Okay, all right. This guy's got mad at me at the mosque. So shock. <laughs> I want you to know that Jesus died for you on the cross. Listen, listen. Well, I don't believe in that. Now, now be respectable. It's I am respectable. I am no. respectable. No, you're doing it right here. I'm, I know I'm doing it here because I love the Muslim. No, you I want you guys no, to know no, the no, truth no, about no, Jesus. No, you don't love, you don't no, 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 no. Wait a second. I got to go back a little. I know I do. That's all I want to tell you. Go back. Okay, right. okay, you can ask me, but I, I'm not going to obey you because man. I'm a yeah, this guy's trying to, to get me to leave. Because in front of the mosque, he says you got to be respectful and stuff like that. I said, "What are you? I did. I, are, I did. Did you become a dimmy, Steve? Is that, <laughs> is that what he's assuming?" Why? 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 He, kept, he kept saying, "I need you to move," because I have a cross. He said, "I need you to move across the street. I need you to move across the street." I was just like, "Well, really? Why? Are you a vampire? What? You know?" <laughs> why? Why? Okay. Why? You understand what I'm saying? Do it across the street. Don't do it. Don't do it in front of the mosque. Why? Okay, the police that. came and told me I'm, I'm listen, okay here. Listen, listen, I'm asking you. The police. Okay, okay you can ask me, but I, I'm not going to obey you because you're a religious man. I'm a Bahki Arabi. 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 I'm going to take it from you. I'm going to take it from you. I'm asking uh, you. Now, this belongs to me. It's my property. You're not right allowed now. to take it from me. I'm asking you to. You're not allowed to take it from me. Right now. I'm asking you to cross the street. Okay. But okay. I'm not going I'm, to. I'm, I'm going to stay here. I'm okay. asking you to cross the street, my man. Okay. Okay. okay, somebody's just, watching this right now. They're, they're going to call the police. I don't, I don't give a fuck if they call the police. Okay. It's probably, it's probably, it's probably, I'm asking you. There's the hardest thing. Police said I could stand here. No, no. Sorry. The police came and told me I could stay here. Listen, it don't mean that it's right. The police told me I could stay here. It don't mean that it's right, though. It don't mean that it's right, man. I'm asking one more time. I'm not going to take it. Okay, I'm telling you right now. I'm not going to take it. Don't, 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 man, don't do that. You see what he did? Wow. Yeah, I saw it. Nice. 
Wow. Where's this guy from? Is he Arabic? Does he speak Arabic or? No, he doesn't speak Arabic. He just, uh, like most Muslims, 90% of the Muslims in the world, he doesn't speak Arabic, but. Did I think he... we, need to get, we need to get Steve did... the fart spray we were talking about, dude. <laughs> <laughs> did uh okay did face he guard. did he I did, did, face guard, you guys so. <laughs> did he do anything besides just spit i mean did he try to forcibly take that cross or did did anything else happen after this or this it just kind of you, you know he, he he stayed there for about another 10 minutes and uh talking yelling not five maybe five minutes or so you know and then I, I, all of a sudden I got, I freaked out. I thought, oh man, what if he has AIDS, you know? Yeah, like, that's exactly. You know, and did I just, you, uh, did I you asked call him. the cops? I did not call the cops, you know, and, uh, but um, I did go to, uh, it's in front of a restaurant. So I went and washed my face real fast. And so, uh, yeah, so that's the, Anyway, nice peaceful uh, afternoon. And well, that, but see, this is—I mean, when okay, number one, you heard the type of language that he that he uses. So this tells you where his heart is, where he, where where his spirit is. Yeah. And then he's, I don't care if this, you know, you know, you're saying, look, this is America, we can do this here, and he's like, I don't give an f. Yeah. So that just tells you where you know, if these people, these people, if. Let me be more concise here. If they were to ever gain power in our country, for example, let's say Israel, let's just take Israel as an example. If, and I know that this is probably personal for you, Steve, if the Palestinians are given right of return and full citizenship within Israel itself, they are going to lose their majority in Israel. Do you think for a second that your right to preach the gospel there would remain? No, absolutely not. No. Absolutely. Yeah, you're absolutely. Okay. If they ever get a majority in this country or gain any type of political power, I mean, you see it already, them trying to, um, what was they trying to, they were trying to run through the UN a few years ago with when Hillary Clinton was uh, Secretary of State, where they tried to shut down any type of criticism or popular criticism of Muhammad. You can't do that. We're going to make that uh, illegal. Really? Yeah. Really? Uh and then again, the the evil David Wood mind is uh, well, what hate speech or trying to limit uh, free speech means that you need to exercise more free speech. So let's go ahead and I don't know, make Islamicize me or whatever. Uh, anyway, uh, well, I'm sorry to see that, Steve. But it did you okay? We had a question here. Did you make a police report on this? Did you file a police report at all? No, I didn't. I didn't. I, but I got I got the guy on camera, you know, and right. and, and I, I filmed him. I said, you know, and I've had the police come out before there, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, a few months ago I went there and I was holding up the cross and, and there's a bunch of American uh, American uh, uh, communists. They're the communists. And for some reason, these guys, love, they hate the cross, too. And they were oh. like, they came up with their posters and just covering the cross. No matter what I do, they would cover the cross. And, and somebody called the police and the police came and they said, you know, they got the right to do that as long as they're not physically touching you, you know. And wow. so yeah, it's like, so I've had, uh, I mean, but the police was there and the police told me you have the right to be here, but so do they. And so, you know, they couldn't do nothing at that point. But so that when I was telling that guy that, you know, the police came and told me I could be here. You know, uh, they have, and you know, this is America. And had you seen this guy before? I haven't seen him, but I've seen many like him, and uh, I've seen many. Uh, for some reason, it's uh, these these guys. Uh, if they're American, and they they seem to get angrier, you know, and they seem to. Uh, I mean, they're. You know, I, I kind of felt like, you know what, it's after Ramadan. They're they're feeling so high. They're on the Ramadan high, you know, like look what I did. I got all these extra credits on my on my <laughs> uh, on my uh, right. on my scale and I've done all this righteousness and I'm so perfect and the world has understood how great Islam is and Ramadan has proved that Islam is the truth. You know, that's how you feel. You know, you feel like I, 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 
rock and roll and they go to the mosque and see me standing there with the cross <laughs> yeah that's, that's got to be like one of the debbie downer things or yeah you know, <laughs> Yeah, so. yeah. Steve, well, the, uh, Steve the Ramadan buzzkill, man. <laughs> totally takes it out of that, man. RBK, RBK, I like that. Our Ramadan buzzkill. Yeah, <laughs> you're harshing his buzz. Oh that my gosh, like the song too. But anyway, sorry to interrupt. Whatever you got. No, that's right. About, so. we appreciate you. We appreciate that information. Um, yeah, and pray for his ministry because this guy he goes out there and he actually lays it on the line to to reach muslims um he, he actually it isn't just here in the united states he was uh lived in palestine gaza or yeah in gaza specifically um and he angered some people they were shooting at you or to a point or something along those lines. like shut your guitar what was it what did they hit your guitar what anyway get his book what's your book's name steve it's called the apostate. There you go. Get his book, and yeah, you it. can you can read all about that. That's it, it's not funny, but it you know if you picture Steve in a van driving through Gaza and people shooting him, he makes it sound sound funny, but it's not. It's it's, it's serious stuff. Okay, we got I got one more one more chronic error, big old chronic error uh, to go over, and then we'll be done for the day. Uh, and it's kind of my favorite one, and it, it whoops, where'd it go? Did I stop sharing? I did stop sharing because, uh, there we go. Okay, the lineage of Mary. Mary, Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? Well, in the Quran, according to the Quran, Mary is the daughter of Imran, and that would make her the sister of Aaron, and Moses, which is really weird because they lived 14, 1500 BC and Mary was supposed to live in the first, first century. And it's in three different spots or a couple, at least a couple different spots. But the, if you are going to discuss this, let me just, let me just preface this. If you were going to discuss this topic with the Muslim, I, because you can go to chapter 19, what is it? Chapter 19, chapter 66 and 20 and you can kind of fudge you can they can they there's wiggle room there for them but if you go to chapter three you go to chapter three there is no wiggle room because it says you have the you have and i have a as a matter of fact let me do this i i need to do this i'm sorry i'm sorry i was making some like real quick corrections prior to the show on this slide and I didn't put my graphic up here. So I'm, I'm just, I don't make it big enough. Um, okay, so let's do this, do this. Okay, go back, share, invite, present, go back. Golly, come on, I'm sorry. I hate dead air, I'm sorry. I should have had that fixed for you. Know, you. What they yeah. said. There, there, there. <laughs> there we go. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I said what this what was noticed back then, they never said sister or brother of. It was always yeah. daughter or son of. Right. And this so is, that's what this it is. Say. Yep, that's uh you're stealing my thunder, Darcy, but you're absolutely right. That's that's my I think that's my last so bullet on here. What's that? So somebody's got to do it. So that's that's, that's, that's all right. I don't, I don't mind it at all. I don't mind it at all. Okay. When you look at the Bible, um, it has Imam's wife um, is Jacobed, and it says that she's a Levite who was born a Levi in Egypt. Okay. So that's 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 a problem. And the reason why is Mary, Mary, number one, lives 1,400 years later, but Mary is if she is the sister of Aaron, that would make her a Levite. But she's not. She's from the tribe of Judah. So that's a huge problem to begin with. Without even knowing, without even without even going to the to the 1400 year uh problem. But if she's the sister of Aaron, it it's referring to her to her lineage. Um let's see here. She's the descendant of David. Okay, and here's the one that Darcy was just talking about. 
when we look at the Bible, that when they refer to people, it's not sister or brother, it's son or daughter. It's the son or daughter of is what's used in the Bible. So this, this rescuing device that was developed in the Hadith literature to you know rescue Muhammad from this grave error, saying that Mary, the mother of Jesus, uh, is uh, the same as the sister of, of Aaron and Moses, is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, you cannot make a bigger, more obvious, more obvious error than this. And people were, were at the time, supposedly, according to the Hadith literature, telling Muhammad, say, hey, look, stupid. You're talking about the wrong Maryam. And then they got to come up with that Hadith saying, well, it's just referring to, they just, in the olden times, they referred to each other as brothers and sisters, yada, yada, yada. And it's, it's, it's simply not true. Um, the one thing that I was, what other thing was I going to, okay, when you go to chapter three, chapter three does a real good job of laying out the lineage because in chapter three, you have Imran and then it talks about his wife. You don't have that in chapters 19 or 66 or chapter 20. I think the other one was 20. You don't, is it 20? Yeah. In chapter 20, you don't have that. You, but here in chapter three, you have Imran and then it says his wife and then it says Mary, it goes to Mary. And then if you go to chapters 19 and 66, then you can make the connection between Aaron and Moses. And then it goes on to say, it goes on to say that Mary has, has her son, Jesus. This is all in chapter three. And it talks about Zacharias in chapter three. So you have a clear connection between Imram, his wife, showing, showing a, uh, a, uh, a, a husband and wife having a child, Mary, and Imran being also the father of Aaron and Moses. So you have this, it's, 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 it's clear as a bell in chapter three. So if you're going to discuss this, I would say if you're going to discuss this with a Muslim, definitely go to uh, chapter three and use that as your, as your source. And chapter, okay. chapter three, by the way, the name of chapter three is Imran. It's called the Surah of Imran. So. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, do I have that? Yeah. Al Imran right there. Oops. Look, 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 look right there. Al Imran. Right there. Duh. Yep. Some of us are that smart. Um, okay. <clears throat> As I said, next week, next week, we are going to be, uh, Steve, you never guess who I'm debating next week. Not, um, not Kenny. No, no. Oh, no. Oh, heavens no. Kenny would not be in the show. Uh, Nadir. I'm bringing Nadir out of here. So, um, <laughs> Uh, Nadir is going to be on here next week. We're going to be discussing uh, the crucifixion. And uh, I, I just did a debate on the crucifixion uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And so there's really not a lot of preparation going on here. Uh, there's a couple things I'm going to take a look at. But uh, for the most part, I think, uh, you know, the, the history speaks for itself. And that's where I'm basically the direction I'm going to be, be going with that. Uh, but there's other debate topics that I've thrown out there. Uh, that I would I like to do. Steve. I what? nominate Steve for the moderator of that debate. Oh, please. Ah, I don't know. <laughs> let me... Uh, there let is me an see. idea. Let me see if Nadir's replied. No. Uh, here's what I wrote to him. I said, sorry to hear your opinion of Issa. I, I was going to ask if he wanted Issa to be the a moderator, and he's like, no, I don't want Issa. And I said, well, why not have Miss Shirks a lot? Uh, be the moderator. He hasn't replied to that. Because um, I think... Why, why does he want was, Issa to be the moderator? He didn't say. Um, well, hold on. Let me look. Uh, um, he, doesn't, he, doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't say. He doesn't say. He doesn't say, he doesn't say <laughs> uh, we'll, get it, we'll get it worked out one way or another. Uh, okay, some debate topics in the future that I'm trying to nail down, see if we can get uh, a debate on Mecca. Do we find Mecca in the Bible? Or do we find Mecca period prior to the seventh century? That'd probably be a better one. Or do we um, find Mecca or do we find Mecca in the Quran? See, that's oh, a good that's, question. That, that well, it's only once, but we had John Isaac on here. And Steve, you would know this. Um, okay, so in because John said that if you have the the letter m for mecca and it's got like a 
I don't know, like a, if you put like a tail on it, some yeah. like a round tail or something. Yeah. It, or no, the, I'm sorry, the B. Yeah. If you, you can change a B to an M by adding yeah. like a, a, a tail to it. Right. A circle. So you can change it from Becca to Mecca. Right. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't know if I, I, I don't know Arabic, so I couldn't, you know, possibly argue that position at all. But it, it does make perfect sense that you know, because it's only mentioned in the in the Quran one time. Yeah, and, and it's, still, it's just you know, an it's unimportant still. place. That's all. Yeah. Well, the, uh, yeah, I just want to say that the uh, with the Mecca Becca thing, you know, it's mentioned one time. It's misspelled B, you know, and uh, you know, it's the most important city uh, of. You know, and you know what they do, though, when they translate into English, you know, that's when they, they add the, you know, they change. Like it says, the mother of all cities. That's what right. it's called, like the mother of cities and all this stuff to where you have it a bunch of times. But and, and in the English, they just say Mecca. But in the Arabic, it doesn't, you know, so. Yeah. Well, why wouldn't the mother of all cities appear on a map until 900 A.D.? Because if it it's the mother of. Well, it could be in ca okay, Captain Obvious. Yeah, I mean it, it doesn't exist. It's not mentioned anywhere until 741 by name, anyway. 741, and that's over 100 years after Muhammad. So there's anyway that that's one of the um, uh, topics I'd like to do, or maybe Muhammad in the Bible. That would be uh, maybe get Sam Shimon to debate him on that again. Um, this is one that would be a lot of fun. Um, Muhammad, who's a better, more reliable prophet, Muhammad or Paul? Oh, ho, ho. that could get interesting. Um, this is one that I've offered up a million times and nobody has ever taken me up on it. Is the Quran from God? And again, uh, has does the Quran claim that uh, the Bible has been corrupted? So if you're a Muslim and you're watching this uh, stream, if you want to debate any of those topics, just contact me at Eric Feckifer at gmail.com and i would be glad uh to set something up with you all right we are at the end of the show folks does anybody have anything that they want to add uh i'll debate anybody on is the quran a if you want if you consider the Quran clear i want i'll de, i'll take the view that it's clear as mud <laughs> clear as mud okay actually it says that which is really funny in surah three it actually says that the Quran and some of it are clear verses, the Um Al Kitab, mm -hmm. and the other verses are unclear. And if you try to understand it, you have a diseased heart. So, I think yeah. that was at the end of uh, my presentation last week, where I, or maybe at the beginning of it, where I was showing because that that that's that's a clear contradiction, where it says it's clear, and then. Right, well, but some of it that's thing. clear, and there's other are not clear. Here's 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 the here's the punchline. The scholars sort of all agree that the Um Al Kitab in the Quran, the clear part, is only the first Surah Al, al Fatiha. <laughs> so that means the rest of the Quran, including the verse that says there are clear verses, is unclear. And if you try to understand it, um, yeah, that that is hard. it's in your heart. Yeah, that's yeah. In, in preparation for your uh, debate with Nadir, you know what I would encourage you to do is to get a bunch of olive oil and and then let someone spill it between your hands, okay, like this, you know, just like to spill it and then have it like spilling into your hand like that and try to uh, to stop the flow of it, you know, and see what happens to it. Just because that's how it is to debate Nadir Ahmed. Oh, yeah. I don't, I I don't think he, tell you the truth, you know, I've debated him once and stuff. I don't think he believes anything. And every time you try to get something, he's just like, you know, he weaseled over there and did something. And so there's a verse in the Bible that says, as oil be, uh, berayeth itself. You know, it's like you try to stop something, but you can't, you know, because it keeps... Right. <laughs> and, then link, and, link, and then Jenny to a wall. Is, is that the other kind of... Did, did you hear his argument about the mustard seed? He made an argument on modern day debates, trying to say that the New Testament is not scientific. And he said that the mustard seed is not the small seed. 
I'm like, dude, it's a spiritual saying. Like, it's obviously not meant to be. But he's like, look, this is how the New Testament is false. They claim the mustard seed is this. And he kept going on. And the Quran says, and the, Quran like, says the same thing, though. Go. You know, that's what Christian <laughs> Trump showed him. So all of us said the same thing. So <laughs> I, it's just insane. I, I'm like, why are you? I've, I've seen him. I, and I'm sorry, Issa, but I, I've seen him argue the, the scientific miracles in the Quran before. Um, and it, I mean, it's just, it's, it's hard to watch because when he said the thing that disproved the Bible was, I mean, he got down to the, to, you know, how do you determine a woman's virginity? And he was saying that, uh, well, anyway, I'm not going to, I'm not, that's just, I'll have to do woodoo if I start talking about it. Um, okay. Uh, I want to add one other thing too that I thought was bizarre is that he wants to attack the Bible, but Islamic tradition, particularly he's taking an Akla Sunnah Jamaa position, a Sunni position, which says that the Bible and the uh, the New Testament and the Torah are not corrupted, right? Only the interpretation of the people is corrupted, but the text itself is not corrupted. That's the Islamic position for Sunnis. So I don't understand this like Tahrif argument that they keep the corrupted argument. It, it doesn't work. Mm. It, it, what it does is it, it, it would be creating a heretical position in Islamic understanding, I think. Well, I, I would I, I would say that the Quran corrupted the Bible. <laughs> you have the other way around. It's like you have more you have more stories like that, that like just don't make any sense in the Quran. Like like history wise is like did um, I did I send you a pre copy of my book, Dominic? Because that, no. that's the thesis of my book is how the Quran tries to corrupt the Bible. Is, no, because 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 I would I would say the Book of Mormon is probably more accurate than the um, <laughs> the Grand, <laughs> Grand Museum. Well, well, at least the Book of Mormon is only a few hundred years off, not a thousand here and a thousand there. And, uh, I mean, it's chronologically inept, just like the Quran. But I mean, at least they attempt to get things in order, and the Quran can't get them in chronological sure. order. <laughs> but, but it was it was it was given by the angel Gabriel, the Book of Mormon. So why not? Why not? Do they have a problem? Wait, with wait. That? It's the same. It's the same angel. It's the same perversions. Jibril, Jibril. Uh, so, so that so Joe is their prophet Mo. <laughs> but no, why not? Is he wrong? With him? Well, Mormonism is prophets. is when we start looking at Mormonism and uh, making contrasting comparing to Islam. It's the similarities are just. All right, when I there. teach, I teach Islam last, and when I, when I'm done teaching uh, Mormonism, I mean, when I'm done teaching Islam, all the students are like, "Oh my gosh, there's so." I let the students do the comparisons. I, I just sit there and listen, and it, it's funny. Yeah, <laughs> kids, kids, kids are perfectly capable of drawing those conclusions, and it happened. I was talking to adults, but <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're talking. Well, I'm just saying when when I, when I was teaching history, I would have to teach. Uh, Joseph Smith, the Mormon Trail, and oh, I, yeah, you uh, got you got junior high, yeah, yeah. So we're you know we're talking about how we you know west you know, expanded westward, and the Mormons were you know played played a relatively uh, big role in that comparative. Yeah, we, we don't even way. touch on that in high school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Anybody else have anything they want to add to the fire? Anything announcements they want to come uh, come up and say? Just let's uh, go, Brandon. And don't forget, <laughs> and, and don't forget to uh, subscribe to Jay. And yeah, Chris I was just going to bring that up. Yep, go ahead and, and get over there and subscribe to that channel. Uh, they have great, uh, great content and very knowledgeable people. And they're link folks. They they speak the language. Like Steve does. It's important. What are you drinking there? What is that, Steve? This is uh, Arabic coffee my wife made for... Oops. Oops. I mean Armenian <laughs> coffee. Sorry. Uh. <laughs> Armenian, it's Armenian coffee. It's Armenian not Arabic co coffee. Uh. Okay. I'll I'll take your word for it. <laughs> All right, everybody. Again, thank you for coming to the show today. Remember next week we're having a debate. So uh, put the word out uh, to your friends and let them know that we're going to uh, be talking about the crucifixion once, once again. And uh, that's all I have. And we, again, everybody in chat, we had a lot of people in chat today. Thank you for coming and, and opining there. It's always, 
it's always great reading your information there. What does this say? It shows that the crown is limited to himself. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. So much, it's again, it's like low hanging fruit. It is like trying to discuss Shakespeare and Hamlet with somebody that is using Dr. Seuss. And I know Dr. Seuss is a, is a genius. Those Charles Schultz and the Peanuts. But it's just hard. All right. God bless everybody. And we will see you next week on the Cross and the Crescent. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>